favorite tech, your favorite mechanic. Let's do this. Let's do it. Ha! Leave it All right, Chris, you can tell him this thing. Okay, I'll laugh. All right. Your favorite mechanic. Let's do this. Let's do it. Lads, today's deck profile, as you probably put together from that that intro, we're doing you Bell Unchained. But this deck was actually voted for by our Discord community. So if you want to hang out with us and talk to myself, Christian, our wonderful editor, Lucas, one of the best teammates you could possibly ask for, and a whole bunch of other cool people. Come and check out our Discord. Link will be in the description. We'd love to have you there. So today, here's the update. Ubell Unchained, and it gets absolutely off the chain. So let's dive right in. Starting off with Ubell Unchained, we have obviously one copy of Ubell and one copy of Terror Incarnate. Now, this deck, there's a couple of variations you can make, and something I've been testing a lot with is, so I've been playing with two Spirit of Ubel, but you can absolutely up this to three. Here's why I'm playing two. I wanna be able to summon this from the deck and destroy it a lot, and it's super helpful having. It is one of the hardest things that I've had to cut, but this is a 40, I think it's 42 card deck right now, but you can absolutely play this at three as well. It's up to personal preference. We're also playing three copies of Gruesome Grave Scorver. This card is actually never bad because you only have to control a fiend in order to summon it, and it can pop a U-Bell, it doesn't have to. Also allows you access to a couple of like different monsters that you could summon, uh, but this extender is just super big for the deck. Uh, rounding up the U-Bell monsters is three copies of Lotus. Lotus letting you summon from the deck is insane. It's super helpful, but also because it can add itself back to the hand or summon itself, you can use it for free tribute for you Bell's maintenance cost, but you can also add it to the hand for the maintenance cost of things like eternal, uh, eternal favorite, or even super poly. If you're si like, if you're like, if you have it, um, we're also playing three copies of nightmare throne and one terraforming, uh, throne being able to add or destroy from deck also mitigates the need for you to be running more than two spirit of you bell in this deck. Uh, because you can just pop it from the deck and summon you bell straight out and then you have that zero in the graveyard which allows other cards to kind of trigger off so nightmare throne is an insane card it really does just bring this deck together uh two copies of nightmare pain i was playing this at three throne kind of makes this and just at two because you can easily get to spirit of you bell off of it or off of samsara or off of other things there's so many ways to get to this card nightmare throne doesn't have as many and I'd rather be able to play a little bit higher count on some of the other cards I'm playing. We are playing one Mature Chronicle. Full disclosure, this card is actually really cool because you're playing things like Super Poly, being able to search it pretty efficiently is really nice, but also having an additional mo like Monster Reborn from the Graveyard for you, Bell, is really strong because you have a few and this just gives you another one, which is always really nice. We are playing one for one because Samsara D Lotus is necessary to the plays. And we're playing one copy of Eternal Favorite, which is a really strong monster reborn, but also super poly on like an archetype, which is really good. That's the Ubel package. Next up, it's time to get off the chain here. We're playing the Unchained package. But wait, I'm playing more than Sharvara. I'm also playing Shyama and a Ruha and a Sarama. I'm playing four Unchained monsters with two prison, one escape, one abominable. Here's why. Aruha and Sharvara are both extenders. These both can help you get through your plays. Let's say they imperm this and you can't get to Nightmare Pain, right? You can Sharvara pop it, get you Bell on the field, and you're able to continue playing the game. Or Aruha pop it, get it on the field, right? So you're able to help get through stuff. Sharvara will let you play around things like imperm and Valor. Aruha will let you just play with a minimal negative impact. Really strong. Um, Escape and Chamber are both really helpful as ways to recycle Sharvara and Shyama, which also can help you out in grind games. And then two prison is just to search whatever one you might need. 
So if you're like trying to bait Ash, you can go Abominations Prison. If they don't stop it, you get Sharvara, you're able to play around stuff. You know, if you already have Sharvara or Shyama or whatever, you can add a Ruha. So there's a lot of versatility for it, but I, you don't need a bigger package than these eight. And you can absolutely go down to the standard two that everybody runs, which is fine. Um, it opens up six spots for like other cards, but uh, that this is just a package that I really like. Next up, three copies of Dark Beckoning Beast and one copy of Opening of the Spirit Gates. Dark Beckoning Beast just lets you search this. It gives you an additional normal summon for something like Simsara, but you can also summon another Dark Beckoning Beast and it's not a complete loss. And Opening of the Spirit Gates summons literally every U Bell monster in existence from the graveyard, which is crazy strong. So this is pretty standard. Um, you could play two of this as well, and it lets you reset things like Nightmare Pain, so if they out your Nightmare Pain, you can just reset it, which is really strong. The going second stuff, it's three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, three Nib, three Super Poly, and two Talents. That's all I needed. That's uh, super helpful. Uh, like I said, if you wanted to cut that Unchained package down, you absolutely can, and it would give you six more cards that you could put in here, or three more you could put in another set of hand traps if you wanted to play something like D Shifter or whatever. I really like this lineup. I've had a lot of success with it. It's very neat. Extra deck. We're playing two copies of Ubel, the Loving Defender Forever. It's the namesake of the deck. Like this card lets you win in time because you burn for a lot of damage. Deals extra damage because you don't take damage and you can blow up your opponent's field or a single monster. Your opponent has to attack it if it's on the field, which is really strong. We're also playing a Garura and a Mud Dragon. They're super poly targets. Two copies of Yama, one copy of Rage, and one copy of Anguish. Uh, Yama will let you add anything from the deck, like any Unchained from the deck to the hand. It gives you more targets as well, so playing two of it is really nice because you have six targets. Uh, this card's not ever dead. And also it lets you, when a card's destroyed, be able to banish it from the graveyard to summon a card from the graveyard. So it lets you extend well past the point of no return. Uh, Rage lets you link with your opponent's monsters during their turn. Anguish lets you link summon with their monsters during your turn. Uh, we are also playing one Unicorn and one Griffin. Unicorn, spin it. Griffin can be really useful if, let's say you get to Anguish here and you go, okay, I'm gonna make a unicorn here because you have a lot of bodies on field because you're able to summon a lot. Then you use the anguish to link with their stuff. You make a griffin. Now you're co-linked. You got two zones that allow you to continue using special summon monster effects, but your opponent has nothing that's linked. You just win the game. Against things like branded, this just turns off the deck. Like it's insane. So having this option in the deck, while it doesn't come up all the time, is incredibly flexible. One muckcracker for, you know, graveyard shenanigans. One SP Little Knight, uh, it's the most common thing you're gonna use to make, uh, cause it gives you extra disruption. So you like, turn anguish into, or rage into this, and then you just banish a bunch of stuff. For the Dark Beckoning Beasts, this card co does come up. Uh, Jin Buster is a way to stop things like Nibiru, super helpful. One DD Wife, Wave High King Caesar, it's a way to just prevent your opponent from special summoning. And one Verudus, Verudrus, because it's another effect negate. Can also, you know, be a pain in the neck for destruction. That is my Ubel Unchained deck profile. Yes, I'm playing a bigger Unchained package than most people, but I thoroughly enjoy it, and I think it's really, really neat how versatile the deck can be, especially in a grind game. Because you're playing a bigger Unchained package, you're able to combo off multiple times, uh, which gives you some really neat recovery too. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Again, thank you so much for voting on this if you're a member of the Discord. And if you haven't joined already, make sure you join it in the link down below. Smash that subscribe button, like if you haven't already, leave a comment, let me know what you think. And until next time, lads, good fun, have luck.